Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to install Commando VM successfully. So for those of you wondering what exactly Commando VM is, Commando VM is a fully customized Windows based security distribution for penetration testing and red teaming. Now before we actually continue, let us just bow our heads down and thank God for the prayers and the prayers that have been answered that we finally got a Windows based penetration testing distribution that can also be used for red teaming. All right, now this uh, script, uh, command, the Commando VM script is released by FireEye. Some of you may know them. Uh, they have also created a similar script uh, to essentially uh, get, uh, in, uh, to essentially install all the tools you require for reverse engineering and malware analysis. So they also worked on that type of box and now they have also decided to, uh, to provide us with this script right over here that uh, will install all the tools required for penetration testing and red teaming. All right, so uh, right over here, I have the GitHub repository and I have uh, I have currently running on Commando VM, as you can see right over here. And I'll get down to the installation in a second and uh, the requirements that you will need. So as you can see right over here, Welcome uh, to Commando VM, a fully customized Windows based security distribution for penetration testing and red teaming and you have your requirements and the instructions to install. So essentially what happens is you need to just download the rep or you need to clone the repository or just download the zip file and you need to run this PowerShell script right over here. All right, now some of you may, may be wondering, well, what exactly does this script do? Well, this script will essentially, uh, it'll, uh, it'll set up your Windows operating system and again, uh, this is going to be a Windows operating system in a virtual machine. That's why you have the abbreviation VM. This is designed to be run in a virtual in, uh, environment and more specifically for the reason uh, that is obvious this script is a brand new and there are there are a few issues that i ran into and of course it's not stable and not something that is recommended to be installed on your physical operating system or your primary os so it's uh, it's recommended that you do this in a virtual machine now personally i'm using virtualbox i prefer using virtualbox for windows boxes as it allows me to easily resize the drives when i need to so that's something that i personally like however you can run this on any virtual machine or any peach uh, any piece of vir virtualization software, whether you're on Windows, Linux, or Mac, or, or Mac, sorry. Uh, so the requirements are as follows: you need to, you can only install the script on a Windows 7 uh, operating system that is Service Pack 1 or Windows 10. Or all of the editions, whether you're running Home, Enterprise, uh, Pro Professional, which is what I'm running, and of course you need to have it activated, although that is not required, but it is quite important. So. Uh, I would recommend that and then you have your uh, you need a 60 plus gigabyte hard drive as this will take quite a bit of space and you need a minimum of two gigabytes of RAM. Now, of course, during the installation, I also had a few things. I have a few things to share. Uh, you have to make sure that all your updates are installed for Windows. And uh, this comes to another point. Uh, you don't need to be running the latest version of Windows 10 or the latest build. So, for example, uh, if I just search for the system uh, system information here, sorry, system uh, the system information and I just opened that up you can see that I'm not running the latest build and uh, that was part of an experiment that I was running yesterday and trying to see whether I can install it on an earlier build this build is probably from 2017 or early 2018 so it does work and uh, you can see that right over here the build is 10586 uh, I know the latest build is about I think 170 so something I don't remember exactly uh, but you can install it on any of the versions although I would not go be, be uh, anywhere beyond 2015 or anything past 2015 as that might cause uh, some issues all right, so now that I've actually gone through uh, all the requirements, uh, you can now take a look at the installation. So what I've done is I've created two snapshots. I have uh, one snapshot which you're currently running, which has Commando VM set up. And I have the other one, which uh, is currently does not have Commando VM, which is, I also recommend you doing. So uh, create one snapshot before you install it and a snapshot after you install it. And of course, then you can clone uh, the, the virtual machine for your own use. All right, so as I've mentioned, the installation is very, very simple. Uh, so it gives you the instructions right over here and show your VM is updated completely. What that means is make sure you don't have any pending updates left. So uh, that is for the first time when you begin the installation. After that, when the system restarts, as it will do during the installation about five times, it is going to disable Windows updates for you. So don't worry about that. For starters, just make sure you have no uh, other pending updates left to be installed as that will really, really mess up uh, whatever you have going. All right, so 
uh, you have to, as it tells you right over, you may have to check for updates, reboot and check until no more remain. Take a snapshot of your machine before the installation, download and copy the install uh, the install.ps1, which is a PowerShell script on your newly configured machine. Open PowerShell as an administrator and then you can enable the script execution and then finally you can install. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna exit or shut down the commando VM right over here and I'll get back to you when I load up the snapshot before the installation of commando VM so I can actually show you how to do how to go about it. So I'm just gonna shut down commando VM. All right, so I have uh, booted up into my previous snapshot and uh, you can see that we're getting a, a little bit of, of a message here from uh, well, what, what do you call it? The Edge browser? Yeah, I was about to call it the Internet Explorer browser, but there we are. Please note that GitHub no longer supports old versions of Edge. Well, isn't that funny? I think Microsoft just got um, uh, GitHub, so that would be very, very weird if they didn't provide that type of support. But in any case, uh, here is the GitHub repository, and uh, this is, of course, Windows 10 without anything on top, just a nice, clean, vanilla installation of your neighborhood-friendly windows 10 with candy crush and all that good stuff you know just a very nice operating system for uh for everyone really uh but of course it does receive quite a bit of hate and of course i'm guessing you can tell uh the sarcasm in my tone but anyway i have downloaded the executable right of, uh, well not the executable the uh, the zip file and I've extracted it right over here. And uh, you can see we, inside the folder, we have the install.ps1 script, right over here, which is the Windows PowerShell script. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, I have just opened up a PowerShell session here. Uh, of course, as administrator, that is quite important. Uh, the next thing you need to do, of course, as it says, is of course, execute the PowerShell script. Uh, but before you do that, you need to make sure that you have your set execution policy to unrestricted. That's if you or your system does not allow the uh, the execution of scripts or unauthenticated scripts. So make sure you just run this command in, power, uh, in PowerShell as administrator and you should be ready to go. So what I'm going to do is, again, I'll just get out of here. I believe I stored it in my downloads folder. Uh, so if we just list the files in here, uh, yeah, well, let's go into users. Uh, which is, we then have users, Alexis, uh, I think it's in downloads, and then we have the commando folder, and again, that has one inside of it, and then finally, we'll hit enter, and we can finally install uh, the script right over here, and of course, I'm not going to take you through the entire installation process, as I said, I have a few things I want to discuss with you guys after the installation, so I have a bit of a time lapse that will come, uh, essentially showing you the early stages of the installation, the installation takes about, uh, as it says right over here, about, um, let me see if I can find that that exact uh, message and you can go ahead and take a look at all the tools. I'll be making a review video of all of this. I think it takes about uh, one to three hours, but for me, it took about five hours to get everything installed. And of course, that's going to depend on your internet speed. All right, so uh, in any case, you can. Uh, it's going to vary depending on your internet speed. So I'm just gonna execute the script here. And of course, that is install ps1 and once i hit enter it's now going to tell me uh just give that a few seconds uh so it's going to check if powershell is running as administrator it's going to check if the operating system is compatible check if uh the if the system has been configured with the uh, the required updates checking if your host has enough uh disk space and it's going to ask me do you need to take a snapshot before continuing in my case i am going to hit no because i don't if you hit yes then it's going to exit the script and it's going to prompt you to again take a snapshot and i'm just going to hit no I was going to get my user credentials. It's going to prompt me for my user credentials now, and it's going to start box starter. So there you are. It's going to begin the installation process now because I already have it installed. I am not going to go through this, but what's going to happen is it's going to start installing all the tools that are required. It's going to start downloading all the files. And of course it uses chocolatey and uh, box starter uh, to get all the packages. But of course, uh, I, I will essentially stop the video here and start the time lapse of the uh, the initial stage of the installation before its first restart. So you want to give this about one to five hours to install, and once it's done, you can then take a snapshot when it's complete. So you should see the time lapse now, and then after that, uh, I should be back on Commando VM where I'll essentially explain what I like and what I don't like about this script. See you there.
right? So once the installation is complete, it should uh, give you this nice little wallpaper once you restart it for the final uh, time so that you make sure everything is installed. Uh, and it'll give you this nice wallpaper and of course uh, i will not have uh, like the uh, you'll not have the uh, the firefox browser and the task manager on the toolbar or the taskbar i did that right now when i was testing a few things so uh, you can see we're currently uh, running commando vm and on your desktop you'll have the readme which will essentially just give you a bit of information as to what to do or how to install or update your packages which i'll cover in another video after i review this operating system for about a week and i use it you know in in different environments uh, on uh, and on different challenges web based challenges network based challenges so the the whole monty here so again you can check that out for yourself if you want to update all your packages you can run cup all it of course comes with cmd -er. And of course, uh, if you run your PowerShell, you can see there is emulation here, which means if I run a tool like uh, the MSF console, uh, or let me just initialize the Metasploit database here, and I'll show you that right now. So, so for example, MSF uh, DB initialize, and I hit enter. So the, the, one of the great things is that it does uh, is it does come with Metasploit, which is pretty cool. Uh, do, would I like to delete? A, yes, I would like to delete. Um, I was gonna start the database. Uh, there we are so i already had one initial uh the msf web service i don't think this works yet of course you have to start the web uh so you have to open that particular port in any case the username is as follows i'll enter the password it should give me an error because i haven't configured it correctly or it actually yeah there we are failed in any case uh if i type in msf console now and hit enter uh, you will see that it will start up but of course given that it is uh, on an emulation level it will not be as fast as it should be but that's just one thing right over here. I'm still to make my entire review. So let me just talk about the things I like and the things I don't like about this script. So first of all, the things I like. So the installation uh, is of course based on, on off a script similar to what you'd have with the Pentest framework or Catulin, where you essentially get to uh, install all the, uh, the, the packages that you want. However, that is also a disadvantage because there is an inability to customize what you would want installed similar to what you'd have with the Pentest framework or Catulin. Secondly, the things I like is it comes with most of the important tools, although it does not come with everything similar to what you'd have on Kali Linux, but it comes with all the important uh, or with all the important tools. So of course you can check the repository for all the tools it comes with. It comes with all the essentials and it also comes with privacy based pieces of software and utilities like uh, it comes with putty, it comes with uh, it comes with key pass, it comes with um, GPG for win, all of that good stuff. So you can see Metasploit does work. And I've already demonstrated how one can do this uh, using the Windows subsystem for Linux, but that's a video on its own. Um, it, the, the other thing I like is the script is very well designed, it, and it also gets rid of certain pieces of telemetry that Windows, you know, comes uh, pa uh, the, 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 that comes bundled with. So, for example, it gets rid of all the default uh, installed Microsoft apps, like for example, news, weather, all that garbage that one really does not need. Uh, it then comes with a word list correction, uh, a word list collection, sorry. So here are your word list and you also have your sec lists, all that good stuff. So you can check this out for yourself. I'll be making a review on that. So um, it also comes with sys internals, which I think is pretty cool. And of course, one of the great advantages uh, is that it uses the Windows subsystem for Linux. And I've talked about the potential for an application of this type of software or for the application of a subsystem and the advantages it can have. All right, and of course, given that the fact that you're running this in a VM, you can take uh, multiple snapshots and clone this VM and make copies for yourself. Now, that was primarily what I was going to do. I was going to distribute my copy, uh, but of course, given that Windows is not free software, I am not able to legally, uh, you know, essentially distribute copies of Commando VM, and that's primarily why they uh, did not do it as well, because uh, again, it's not free software and you can not make copies, regardless of whether or not people are going to use their own licenses of the software. It just isn't legal to do. So I do apologize uh, for that. All right. So the things I don't like, of course, I've mentioned the inability to customize what you want installed. As a result, it's going to take hours and it installs stuff that you might not need. For example, it installs uh, GIMP, which I found I really don't need on a penetration testing operating system or distribution so that uh, is one of the disadvantages there the second thing is the installation time is too long now 
for, for many people, whether you have a 50 megabit uh, download speed, it'll still take about uh, th three or four hours to get all the files you need because you may, you may be downloading a file, for example, GIMP, and the GIMP uh, mirror, if you're, downloading, if you're downloading it from a mirror, is going to limit your, 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 your download speed or your bandwidth. And as a result, your, your, yeah, regardless of your internet speed, the process is still going to take a while. In my case, as I mentioned, it took about five hours and it really restarted about five times. So you might want to give this uh, a bit of time to do. I, I, I prefer leaving it running the entire night. Uh, and moving on to our other disadvantages or the things that I did not like is because it is Windows, again, you, you are unable to distribute copies of this, even though you can uh, disable licenses. And of course, users can then enable their own licenses on it. It just isn't legal to do. And then the one of the biggest disadvantages is, is of course, the, your inability to, to, to roll back if you have not taken a snapshot uh, and you have to restart the installation if the installation is, uh, is interrupted. So if you do end up interrupting the installation, which is what happened because I've been trying to install this successfully for about two days, uh, what happens is that you cannot use Windows anymore. It'll essentially, uh, depending on where, where you interrupt it, it does, uh, it, it does really mess with the packages and the functionality of Windows. So I, I would not recommend interrupting the installation at all. All right, so now that we've essentially covered what I like and what I don't like, uh, I will leave it to you guys to take it through your own uh, series of tests. My review video will be coming out in a week's time, so you can wait for that uh, and get the full verdict on whether or not this is worth it or worth running uh, for penetration tests or simply for CTFs. All right, so that being said, that is going to be it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or suggestions, let me know in the comment section on my social networks or at the forum at hackersploit.org. I will be seeing you in the next video. Peace.